The boss of the controversial High Speed 2 rail project has challenged politicians to build it faster to cut costs. The initial plan is for a new high speed link between London and the West Midlands, set to be finished by 2026. Then a V-shaped second section would take services from Birmingham to either Manchester or Leeds, with completion around 2032-33. But Sir David Higgins, the HS2 chairman, wants this delivered up to six years earlier. He also wants a more comprehensive redevelopment of London's Euston Station, plus a new transport hub at Crewe, and more work to be done on phase two to integrate HS2 into the existing rail network. The longer you drag out a project, the more you pay in overheads and, and costs of administrating a project. The supply chain can plan for a project if it knows the full extent and scale of it. And then inflation. Inflation affects all the costs of, uh, that you carry out on a project. Well, Adele Robinson is in Manchester, which will be the eventual destination of phase two of this project. And it was the location Sir David Higgins chose to hold his news conference this morning. And uh, from the perspective of uh, Manchester, uh, a quicker and uh, possibly cheaper uh, HS2, is that considered to be good news? Well, it depends on who you speak to. There's uh, people on both sides of the fence, people who are passionately supporting it and those who are bitterly uh, against it. One of the main issues that's been picked up here today by some of the protesters outside the town hall here was the fact that they believe this was supposed to be uh, a report looking at the potential cost-cutting measures that could be made to bring the costs down. They say that Sir David Higgins didn't actually identify any areas for potential savings. In his report, he says that phase one, uh, the budget for phase one, which is Birmingham to London, that line, that budget is enough. The phase two, which would link London with northern cities and the connect, improved connectivity there, he said it's too early to assess that. But he did make a direct connection with the legislative processes, the legislative timetable and parliamentary processes and the contingency uh, costs as well. Essentially saying that speedier that the uh, legislation goes through, the better the chance of some of these cost-cutting measures in the future. Potentially there was uh, the uh, movement for or uh, possibility for cost reduction measures in the future. Now I've been speaking to Joe Rukin, he was one of the protesters here today and he's questioned some of the figures that Sir David Higgins has drawn upon in his report. I think that it's quite amazing that David Higgins has taken three months to uh, deliver a cost-cutting report that doesn't actually cost cut a single penny off the cost of HS2 and still working the thing out in 2011 prices. He's saying that you can deliver it quicker and therefore cheaper by eliminating inflation, but that only works if you've included inflation in your costs in the first place. Using the formula that they've used to calculate benefits just to get HS2 to 2014 cost, to cost of today, would be £64 billion. Pounds. And Adele, would it still be fair to say, nonetheless, as is claimed by the government, that there is more enthusiasm for this project uh, the further north you get in England? Well, I'm not quite sure that's true because it depends again where you are in the north. If you're perhaps in the northeast, you might, well, some people have been complaining that they're being left out. If you're in places like Exeter, then how are they particularly going to benefit? And that's something, again, that people who are against this project are picking up on. They say that it's too narrow focused. Uh, the author of this report, though, today, Sir David Higgins, uh, does. Uh, emphasise that he believes that there would be these economic benefits for the northern cities uh, as well. It would open up, it would unlock the potential, this project, if you like. That's exactly what he said. Not only would it address capacity issues, particularly from the Birmingham to London line, uh, it would also improve the connectivity uh, between northern cities as well as London. But of course, Lord Mandelson has said that this is a joke on the north and that it would just funnel business back into London. So still questions raised over how it would exactly benefit some of the cities in the north, uh, specifically uh, the northeast. Um, but of course, Sir David Higgins is saying it's vital for the co country's future. Adele, thank you very much indeed. And in around quarter of an hour here on.